I changed up the castle music because I figured I probably should a few times throughout the playthrough, so that's what I'm doing. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, Doogie just settled down a little bit ago, and I figured we could do some late night chilling here. I have very recently wrapped up a whole bunch of stuff around here, like uh, Detective Pikachu Returns was recently beaten. Uh, Walking Dead Season 1 was beaten, what, like last night? Yeah, I'm fairly certain it was last night's streaming stream in there. And uh, then there was also Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which is now beaten, which I might still do a little bit more content on, but we'll see. We'll see. That was definitely a fun game. Hey, Jesse. So, yeah, Fire Emblem Fates is the thing that I haven't done for a little while now. In fact, when was the last time that I streamed this? Hold on. Let's see here. So this is stream 25 of Fire Emblem Fates. When was stream 24 again? Let's see here. The answer is... It's not that stream in a stream. That was the Detective Pikachu one. Because I feel like it's been a hot second. Was it before Super Mario Bros. Wonder came out? As I'm going through my VODs here, it might have actually been then. Yeah, October 15th. It's currently October 29th. So, I haven't streamed this for two weeks, <laughs> is the case. So, it's it's been a hot second. Hey, Jess. You know, Doogie doesn't get around super well nowadays. You know, once she plops down, she's kind of stuck there, you know. Because she struggles to get up and down. I mean, sometimes she has some difficulty with being restless and not knowing where exactly to plop down. But this is where she's found her spot. So, you know, apologies that Doogie Cam is not exactly in a super great position there. But that's what it's going to have to be. You know, her comfort comes first. And this is where she wanted to lay down. So this is where she's laying down. Is the case. She kind of blends in with the darkness there. You can just kind of see the white fur of hers. Hey, Jesse. Um... But yeah, um, in a couple days is going to be Halloween and going to do some Luigi's Mansion on that day. And a couple days ago, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie just released that, you know, was brought up in chat there uh, a hot second ago just before starting streaming a stream. So I guess I'll say that like my surface level thoughts for that are like I generally liked it. I really like the characters of, uh, you know, Mike and Emma and stuff. I feel like the weakest character was probably William Afton. The second weakest was probably Vanessa. I liked most of it. I felt like it got a little bit convoluted towards the end. And a few moments that made me scratch my head and go, really? How does that work? You know, <laughs> there was a couple of moments like that. Um, I was able to get behind like the main character. I was worried that, you know, the main character might be like a super bland generic kind of dudo that, you know, doesn't really have a story that I can get behind, but I could. And I liked that. That made me intrigued with his story and, you know, want to see right done by him and stuff like that yeah like maybe they'll be more explored in depth later because i don't know if it's true but i've heard the rumor mill saying that uh you know there might already be a sequel on the way now that it's confirmed that yeah this film has done super well oh it's a three film deal interesting uh oh don't crash on me okay i was a little bit worried there for a hot second um okay if they're explored more, then that would definitely help because it really felt like there wasn't a whole lot going on there. Like, I'm trying to, uh, you know, talk about it as best I can without like any major spoilers for, you know, anyone that hasn't seen it. Oh, yeah, my resources. Um, interesting. So they might just make it like a trilogy there. I guess we'll see what happens. I forgot. Sometimes shortly after the last stream in a stream. I did a thing. My CPU is really struggling here. Oh, maybe the fact that I'm... I have the stream and stream playing on the stream manager might contribute. If I pause that, it might make the game a little bit less laggy and stuff. Um, I, since the last time, once again tried out on my 3DS connecting to other castles. And... For whatever reason, like, I just tested it out on my Birthright file, which is still, like, on here from the Birthright playthrough, and I successfully connected to other castles, and I was like, wait, what? So then I transferred over the save data of Conquest here onto my 3DS, and I tried connecting to other castles, and it didn't work. Um, and then I tried, you know, connecting to other castles, like, on my Birthright save file to see if that would work, and it didn't work. And I don't know what it is, 
but it just seems like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I restarted my 3DS several times and I was like, oh, if I can get this to work, then I can just take away that like 50 plus of each resource that I gave me. Like I had added 50 to my total each of those resources since I couldn't visit other castles to get them. Uh, and I didn't want to wait around for RNG of like random characters just giving me one and then grinding it out in the arena over time like that. That's not how it was intended to be played. It was intended to be played by you visiting other castles. And I it worked once. Like, I managed to visit other castles with this conquest file here, but only five times the exact amount to get like a full dragon point value. Thank goodness. So we don't have like the progress bar there, like stuck at midway or something like that. And then it didn't work. It was like a network connection error, like has been lost or something like that. And I looked it up online and apparently a lot of other people are having that issue. So whoops. Even though like the eShop is down right now and it's only supposed to be sometime next year that the 3DS and Wii U services like online services go down completely, even though that's not supposed to have happened yet. I'm seeing other people reporting issues of like the whole visiting other castles is just not really working, but sometimes rarely it does. So, you know, I took away those 50 plus of each resource because I was like, oh, I can do it legitimately after all. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't really think I feel like rolling the dice on RNG to visit other castles. So I am probably just going to use the save data editor and give myself more resources there. Like revert the thing that I just undid because yeah, visiting other castles, it's not happening, which means that this game is going to be darn near impossible to amass significant quantities of these resources if you don't cheat at this point, thanks to Nintendo being Nintendo. But you know, it <laughs> It's not my fault, okay? You know, I'm just doing what I have to do here. But in those five castles that I visited, I did manage to snag some resources. Also, I didn't feel like, you know, sticking my arms forward and using mouse and keyboard today, so I rigged up my controller. I'm just gonna play with controller for a little while. I grabbed some things. Here's an eternal seal. I think I got a couple eternal seals and a couple heart seals. Um, yeah, so I put one on Felicia and one on Azura to remind myself to do this, like, the next time I start streaming. But... Okay, I have two more eternal seals in the convoy, and I got two more heart seals. Reason why I have three total is because at my, my current shop level, there was one that I was already able to buy here. Wait, no, I would have gotten th five things because I made five visits. Okay, yeah, it was three eternal seals. Okay, so I bought three eternal seals because there's one in her inventory and two in the convoy and two heart seals. That's what I bought in my five castle visits that the game allowed me to do before it was just like, yeah, sucks to suck. Guess you're not connecting to other castles anymore. Feel like rolling the dice and seeing if you can do it. And I don't know if I feel like doing it. So, you know, we'll see what comes of that. But yeah, hello, hello, Doormaster. Thank you, I haven't seen you. I want to stay spoiler free. Yeah, like I realized that it's still only very recently come out. And... Yeah, I feel like it is the kind of thing, like, having seen it, I feel like it is one of those kinds of things that is better going into it spoiler-free. Like, I remember the, I think it was the very first podcast. No, no, it wasn't the very first podcast. It was recently in my memory because it was the most recently edited podcast. The one that's yet to go up, episode three of the podcast that I've been doing with Sate, um, I'll see what support conversations I have first, um, was on perception in games and, like, how our perceptions change. And one of the things that we talked about was spoilers and... I think it was Fermata that was talking a little bit about, uh, you know, how sometimes spoilers can enhance the experience because now you're curious about what leads up to that point. You know, and it's like, maybe in some cases, I don't know. I don't think the Five Nights film is one of them. I think the Five Nights film is one that's better to go into spoiler free, honestly. I just, yeah, she's uh, not been feeling super great lately, so she's been like, a lot more affectionate than she usually is. Usually she's a kind of antisocial dog that's like, I want to be near you, but don't pet me. But, you know, she's been pretty affectionate lately. Wanting to comfort here. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be giving the doggy lots of comfort throughout the Stribidus stream. But yeah, so much better than a typical gory horror film. Yeah, one of the, uh, like, I'll talk about some things I want to talk about about without getting into spoilers here. That was one of the things where it's like, it's a PG-13 film. Like, it's not an R-rated thing. And I saw... I forget where it was. It was something that on the platform formerly known as Twitter where, like, the main director or some head honcho had said that there wouldn't be a... Whoops. That there wouldn't be a rated R release version of it that does get into gore because... The version that they created of it felt like very fitting for that world and stuff. And they felt like, you know, that was the optimal way, you know, to do it there. That, like it wasn't a censored version of what they would have otherwise done. And having seen it, it's like, yeah, it, 
it actually did what it needed to pretty well without really having much reliance on gore, you know, which I thought was pretty nice because I'm not really, you know, I don't really watch horror movies all that much. And that felt like a horror movie that, you know, is kind of entry level stuff, you know, since it's clearly meant to be consumed by, you know, wide range of audiences, probably meant to target, you know, the generally younger teen slash young adult audience that primarily, you know, makes up their fan base and stuff like that. I do feel like they did a good job of that. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Five Nights is always better when you got no idea what's happening the first time through. FNAF isn't a gory series like most other gory parts are rather or rather, I assume that's supposed to say tame, yeah, when compared to other horror series. Yeah, so it was fitting for, like, that IP as well to end up doing that. I have so many support conversations queued up, by the way. Because, <laughs> you know, in the couple weeks since streaming this last, I had a look at my spreadsheet. I was like, what supports do I need to build up? And I built up, you know, those and then some. So, yeah, we're going to be here a little while before we get back to playing the video game. But as for the chapter we're on, it's this. May as well add it to the, you know, screen here. So, yeah. If I have some other thoughts, I'll probably talk about them, like, as they come to me as I'm going through, like, support conversations here. Hey, Jesse. Oh, I'm sorry, Jess. Kind of got a little bit close to your nose there. Yeah. Good head scritch. Hello, Elise. You look so cute in your kimono the other day. All our friends agree. Adjust my microphone there. What's wrong, Elise? You seem distracted. Oh, I'm sorry, big sis. I was thinking about something important and... Sorry, what did you say? I just wanted to tell you how beautiful you looked in your kimono the other day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> At least, is something bothering you? I hope you know you can tell me anything. You just see. Well, when I wore that kimono, I kept thinking about Queen Makoto's words. When the world is at peace, I want to wear that kimono proudly in the streets of Nor. That's a sweet thought, Elise, but you know what that means. I do. A fight between warring nations won't be easy to break up. I also know some people won't understand my decision to strive for peace. Also, it might not be, you know, immediately evident, but Dogi will be continuously getting head scratches for a little while here, it seems like. But in my heart, I know that bringing Nor and Hoshido together is the right choice. Elias, if I could show our people all the wonderful things Hoshido's culture has to offer, maybe they'd be more understanding, more open to change. That's my wish. <laughs> what do you think, Azura? Think it'll work? I think that's a lovely idea. If anyone can achieve such a thing, it's you. Queen Makoto would have loved to hear such words from Nor's littlest princess. Then it's settled. When the time comes, I'm gonna try my hardest. Elise, you're so cheerful and kind. You truly inspire me. <laughs> Don't praise me too much, sis. You're making me blush. Had some kimono, eh? It made me want to change the whole world. She's a Canadian now, she's saying, hey. Your enthusiasm brings me so much joy. I'm proud of you, Elise. I don't think Elise wanted to A plus Azura. I think Azura might have wanted to A plus Elise because it might literally be her only option in this. I think that's why I was building up. Let me double check my sheet here for Conquest Stream. Hello, hello, Lancer. How's it going today? But yeah, I love the film's music. Hell, he bought the OST. I didn't notice it too much myself going through. But that was me. Hey, Jess. But yeah, so two things. One, you're sick of fucking sucks. Two, you did make this. Oh, wait, the homework. I forgot about this here. The thing that we discussed last time. Holy crap. Going to be like the one student in class that completed the homework, setting an exemplary, an exemplary example for the rest of the class here. <laughs> That's amazing there. Hold on. Yeah, so her... Different A plus options are Hinoka, Sakura, and Elise. And of course, Elise is the only one here in this route. So it's like, that's what we kind of have to go with for Azura, you know, because everyone's going to have like, by default, the three A plus options. I mean, not everyone like look at Jacob and he only has Silas and Takumi and he doesn't even get anything from Silas. It's so dumb, but they weren't going to they weren't going to give her four. Even though looking at my spreadsheet, there is one character that has four. Female Kana has Midori, Mitama, Selkie, and Valoria. And then male Kana has Shiro, Siegbert, and Percy. So I guess female Kana is capable of making more friends than male Kana because that makes total sense right there. Probably just like some weird thing where they needed to fill up the slots of, hey, here's three for each of those characters or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, Azura has three. Those are her three. So that means that she's not allowed to become best friends with Camilla. That's the only princess that she can't friend. Whoop, I get my buttons straight here. Um, so 
yeah, considering this is literally the only A plus option, you know, that's uh that's what we're going with here. Bam, Azura and Elise su attained support rank A plus. But yeah, I'm fairly certain that Elise is gonna A plus Effie though. Also, your internet is shitting its pants hard to yummy the tier list, and then I can judge you for your taste. <laughs> the judgment will continue here. Um yeah, some other thoughts are coming to me here real quick. Other things I want to say about the FNAF movie here, again, like, as spoiler-free as I can. When I say that, like, my biggest criticism is, like, the plot getting a little bit convoluted at the end, it's mostly stuff related to Afton. Like, it's not spoilery to say that. He's been shown in the trailers that he makes an appearance, you know? Um, some of the stuff in regards to him is just like, really? He can do that? What? Um... And, you know, so there were some bits like that where I felt like, okay, well, I guess maybe it was written this way because it was the way that it needed to be or something like that for the sake of having the climax and stuff. I don't know. Um, you know, some things felt a couple out, a little bit out of left field there. I'd say that I quite enjoyed like maybe the first 80 percent and I was kind of mixed feelings on the last 20 percent because of that, like leading up to the finale there. Um, but yeah, like I was saying about the main character. Uh, he wasn't just some, you know, generic guy that we know basically nothing about, like the mainland games. He was an actual character that I really wanted to root for and, you know, get behind, like, what his main driving motivation was and stuff like that. I thought that, I thought Mike was really good. And the acting was really good, too. Like, you know, he did a bang-up job and a whole lot of other people did here, too. You know, I like to have really complicated lore. I do wish that sometimes it was... It made a little bit more sense you know i feel like eventually it kind of got to the point where it's like okay is there even like a clean way that everything can fit together yeah as someone who's knee deep in the lore well it did make perfect sense to you huh so maybe it does make canonical reasons why but as a more casual viewer it might be you know a little bit more jarring i do gotta say like the animatronics costumes like for uh freddy bonnie and chica there the fact that those were costumes that you know were had real people playing in them that were made to look like robots they did a bang up job so apparent from what i heard apparently foxy was the only one that you know couldn't have a person put inside because of like the thin limbs and stuff like that you can't exactly hide a person inside there but you know all four of them like they honestly did a bang up job it that was really good hold on <laughs> let's see this here are we going to judge <laughs> oh there's even tears here Jim Henson's Workshop, that's the name of the company then, did amazing work on the costume of the robots. For sure. Like, that was good. I very much approved of that. All right, let's see here. <laughs> let's see here. Are we going to judge? Well, can I make this its own individual tab? Oh, my computer's lagging real bad. <laughs> it's tough. All right, let's see here. Here's Discord app stuff. Um. All right, let's see. Oh, but maybe I should uh, do this temporarily. And yeah, I forgot with the way that I have stuff set up here. The corn sprite is like between the jar and the this layer, which means that she just vanishes. But yeah, same company who designed creatures like the Muppets. Okay, that that makes sense then. I gotcha. Um, let's see here. So right, <laughs> right at the top there, we have Charlotte, Corin. There's Camilla at the top, the one that, you know, kind of creeps me out. Valoria, Ophelia, and Kagero. Okay. Gotcha. And then we have Underwood here. Okay, I'll just move like... The way that we did before is just moving the mouse cursor across. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. That was fair enough there. My camera's blocking some. But that's the way that is there. Very definite maybe for this group here. Okay. Um, But yeah, I guess this is a tier list made under the made as like a completely straight thing there not not gonna rate the hot guys up there like you know i as someone who's straight myself would still if i'm making a thing where bob still be like all right i'm still gonna include like the hot guys even if i realistically wouldn't just to be like you know fair here and all that but uh yeah neither am i but i can still recognize when a guy is hot you know right i don't know <laughs> but that's the way that i form these kinds of things also, I saw a, uh, on the platform formerly known as Twitter, 
I think it was like an IGN post where it was of the new Spider-Man game where they were like, all right, here's a here's a clip of zooming in on Venom's ass and stuff. And the quote retweet that I saw was someone saying like, you know, if this was a female character, like, you know, there'd be so many calls for boycotts, so much controversy at IGN and like calls to be fired or someone would be fired. And it's like, yeah, that uh, that sounds about right. You know, I'm all about like equal representation here, you know. Let's, let's say everyone's fair game, Noah. Let's see here. But yeah, you know, these are definitely some cool guys right there and stuff. But yeah, I, fair enough there. Oh, yeah, the, the doogie here. Very quite, very quite relaxed, it seems like. Okay, but who's in the know? Okay, yeah, they're, they're kind of crazy. She's kind of crazy too. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Oh, come on, but Jacob's rad. You know, what? what's up with that? Hmm. Okay. Not <laughs> touching with a 39 by two, wait. <laughs> Foot pull there. Yeah, like all the kiddos, you know, that's fair enough there. But what? But yeah, uh, literally, this entire row is just genuinely, hey, here's the ones that are either literal children or looks like a child, and then there's Selkie. Slight judgment there. But uh, yeah, that's what I would say <laughs> right there. So there's my personal disagreements, but, you know, I very much applaud the, <laughs> the completing of the class homework there. Um, Aboro said the notes here because she'd call you a slur. That's fair enough. She probably would, you know, if you're if you're not from Hoshido, you know, and a half foot pole. That's a reference. OK, I didn't get it then. <laughs> I'm uncultured here. But yeah, everyone is equally sex. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, there's so many video games out there that have, you know, these female characters that are clearly meant to be sexualized. What about the guys, though? What about the men? You know, I'm all about equal representation out here, you know? But, yeah. There's that. Um, do- Hold on. <laughs> Wait, because the homework was done, should I assign a grade? Um. Yeah, I mean, that's fair there. Hold on. Let's- Let's assign a grade here. Um, let's say- You know, I'll- a lot of stuff there was pretty fair enough bang on, but I'm giving a grade of 92 out of 100. It's a pretty good grade, though, you know, <laughs> and, you know, homework turned in like right on time there, you know, didn't didn't miss the, uh, <laughs> the submission deadline or anything like that. Whoops, I gave my buttons all mixed up. And, you know, definitely setting a good example for the rest of the class, you know. <laughs> Well, it's a strange place, isn't it? Hmm? Why do you say that? Oh, yeah, speaking of <laughs> that topic of Fire Emblem, uh, I have something else that I should mention in a hot second here. Let's go through the support conversation first, though. <laughs> if it wasn't, we wouldn't be together like this. If things had turned out just a little different, I'd never have seen you again after we met. I knew the guards wouldn't let me sneak out again after they found out who I was. Yes, it's not often that the lives of commoners and princesses overlap. I was so shocked when I saw you at the castle in full uniform to think you were the same girl I'd met in town. I knew then and there that we'd be friends forever. I kept remember I just see you remembering your face on the day we met. To have snuck out of the castle and gone all that way on your own. I knew that I had to spend my life protecting that brave, sweet girl. I knew that to do that, I'd have to join the castle guard, so I trained as hard as I could. I lifted boulders beneath waterfalls and swam upstream through the rapids. <laughs> I even went hunting but nothing with nothing but my bare hands. <laughs> really? Yikes, I didn't know that part. But it was because of those hardships that I earned the honor of being your retainer. I feel only gratitude for the pain I suffered. It made me strong. It really did. You're the strongest person I've ever known, Effie. Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> no need to thank me. I promise, I'll never let us get separated again, no matter what. Thank you, milady, and I promise to protect you until the end of time. I'm so glad we met. Me too. A lot of S supports with Kana are made platonic in the English version because Kana's super young. 
And Selkie's one of the characters, the only one who isn't platonic with male kana, so you're assuming they're roughly the same age. Huh. Also, I can A plus here now. Um, but I am going to double check my sheet before I do anything. Yeah, Elise with Effie, which will give her access to things like Luna, which is nice. And Elise's options are Camilla, that would give her Wyvern Rider. Azura, that would give her Sky Knight. And Effie, that would give her Nice. I feel like in terms of the skills that I can get, you know, Effie's going to be the most useful. And, you know, Elise is just fine sticking with like her default classes that she has access to. So may as well get some good skills along the way. So, yeah, Elise and Effie there. But as for Effie, I assume Effie probably wants someone else. Yep, Effie wants someone else is the case. So, yeah, I'm not doing that. But, yeah. Yeah, like, that's what I assume there is that, you know, that they were far from the same age that, you know. Because kind of like this literal small child here and stuff. Uh, here's a support that just kind of happened along the way. Oh, hey, Kaze. Greetings, princess. How may I be of service? Should I have said Kyle? Let's play, please. I'm so bored. Well, <clears throat> I suppose I have nothing of great importance to do at the moment. You don't sound very excited. Do you not like me? I like you quite well. Yeah, Dogie's being very affectionate tonight. Rather, I'm concerned one such as I will make up for a poor playmate. Why? Because you're all serious and stuff? Phooey, I think we'll make great friends. One day, I'd like to make friends with the whole army. The horses, too. But you're at the top of my list. I'm honored, milady. Does that mean you'll play with me? It would be dishonorable to refuse such a sweet request from a princess. If you consider me worthy of spending your free time with, I will gladly join your game. Yay! Thanks, Kyle! Alrighty, let's play Death Race, a game that we recently discussed in, uh, in my game design class when we talked about violence in games, where it's a game where you just hit supposedly gremlins but they look they, they just look like stick figures essentially they could be anything and people associate it with a film that it was clearly trying to you know make a quick buck off of and you know that was a uh, that was one of the early days discussions of ah oh, video games are violent and being a bad influence on kids and they're gonna be uh <laughs> they're gonna be driving their vehicles into pedestrians because of the example that this game teaches <laughs> we watched a few clips in class about like interviews at the time on the news and this one kid was like what i don't even know how to drive <laughs> anyway that that was one of the games that was on my mind now and that's what popped into my head there um yeah so definitely death race but milady that's such a violent video game as you wish <laughs> sucker you have no idea how good i am at this game but he's a ninja he's just gonna vanish okay you're it count to 30 and then come find me if you can Understood. Let's get started. Ready, set, go! <laughs> uh, now where could... Does she really think she's hidden? Well, uh, this is awkward. I imagine she'd be upset if I found her right away. Perhaps I should... Hmm. Oh dear, where is the princess? I've looked everywhere. I may never find her. How did she manage to disappear like that? <laughs> I was right here the whole time, Kyle! Princess, I'm shocked. I never would have guessed you were behind the bookcase. You weren't kidding when you said you were good at this game. Aren't I the best at hiding? Without question. Yay, <laughs> if a cool ninja like you is impressed, I must be even better than I thought. It must be so. <laughs> that was so much fun. I gotta go, but let's play again soon. As you wish. Next time I shall not lose. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Bye, Kyle. <laughs> I hope I did the right thing. Well, she appears to be happy, so no harm done. Yeah, Kyle, because that was one of the memes we had uh, with the birthright playthrough where we just called Kaze Kyle that, <laughs> that Lancer reminded me of that I kind of forgot about. But yeah, let's see here. By the way, the version of the materials you saw was version 3. Not much change between versions 1 and 2, but Garen, Hansi, and Iago were in that tier. Wait, were they in some other tier and I just didn't even notice them there? Or were they gone from the sheet completely? Okay, I'm, they're gone from the sheet completely. I was about to say, like, there's no way I didn't just see them. Or just didn't not see them. My goodness, words are hard sometimes, you know. Um, but yeah, because the tier list maker had Hansi Yago and Garen on it for some reason. I mean, you know, their characters in the game. Move them entirely because they aren't playable. Not under legitimate means, at least. But yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that probably did start from you misreading it. But yeah, I discussed that, but not Mortal Kombat. The reason the game have age ratings now. No, we discussed Mortal Kombat too. It's just that Death Race was like one of the earliest video games that spawned the discussion of, you know, ah, they're a bad influence on our kids. Like it's way too violent and stuff like that. Apparently it was like one of the first examples within the industry of that was the case. Jesse, you are stepping on my blanket now. Mind if I, there, just pull that out of the way. <laughs> so night trap discussed i don't think so what was night trap also now that we're talking about this stuff with the tier list there that just reminded me so there uh is this something that i should know here um like maybe it was that i forgot but you know i feel like it might not have been i don't think at least um we go through like several different topics in this class every week like uh you know violence in games like uh progressive gameplay you know stuff like that um all sorts of different units and all sorts of different subjects storytelling in games which i did my video essay on metroid prime on when you do three game analysis throughout the course my second game analysis was on metroid prime on the topic of like storytelling in games which i've already published to the channel my first one was on the topic of games as art with the subject of firewatch which i'm gonna have to redo and i'll do in the video essay format and then publish on the channel but as for game analysis three i don't know what to do yet um, but I asked the professor, like, there's always, like, a small handful of games that you can play and, you know, talk about as options for these various subjects, but you can also get the prof's permission to do, like, a completely different game that isn't there, uh, and that's how I got permission to do Metroid Prime there for storytelling and games, where she was like, yeah, do it, Metroid Prime for storytelling and games, what a good example, you should definitely do it, and I did it. And I, I got 100%. I haven't got 100% on like an analysis assignment in so long. It felt awesome. Um, but I wasn't sure whether I was going to do Metroid Prime when I asked her. I just wanted to put the option on the table if I like if I wanted to do it. So during the last class, I asked her about getting another option on the table. And I asked her if for the topic of uh, gender, sex and games, I could do Fire Emblem Fates or Fire Emblem Awakening, one of the two, but this is the weirder one, so this is what there'd be more material on. Um, and she was like, okay, how so? And I explained that in these games, you like pair off your units and get child units that are like a combination of the parent's stats. So there's like a direct reward that the game gives you for like engaging with this gameplay mechanic of making your characters screw one another. Um, and you can either do it like maybe story wise and like, oh, I think these people should go together. That's fun. Or purely stat wise, like to strategize like, hmm, what is going to result in like the best stat for, you know, the kids here and stuff like that. And she was like, OK, that sounds intriguing. You can do it if you'd like. So I don't know whether I will, but I got the option on the table. It is possible that I can make a video essay on sex in Fire Emblem Fates and turn it in as an official university assignment. So, yeah, I uh, I don't know whether that's going to happen, but I, <laughs> just to get a disclose that that is a possibility and it's something that might be seen around here, you know, and if that's something that, you know, anyone would be interested in seeing a video essay on, let me know. I don't think I'm going to, you know, let that influence my decision about like whether or not I'm making a university assignment, but you know, if I do keep on doing more short form video essays here, then even if I do choose game analysis three to be on something else, then it's something that I could still consider doing later just for the fun of it, you know, is the case. But yeah, let's see here. Um, but yeah, Night Trap is a game where you have to activate traps to stop some vampire-esque dudes from attacking a slumber. Oh, we did talk about that one, I think. But that's the one that was in like live action, right? Sort of. We like the pixelated live action. Like it was one of the early live action things. We we did talk about that one. I just didn't know the name of it. Like if it's the one that's live action, right? Yeah, okay, we did talk about that one. I just did not recall what it was called. Yeah, we okay, we did talk about that one. We did indeed. I forget whether, I think it was in the unit on gender, sex and games. We ended up talking about that one. <laughs> from, the, from the clips that we saw there, it seemed... Like a very strange video game. But yeah, we, we did actually talk about that one. <laughs> now they mentioned it. Topic of Mortal Kombat and violence is really funny how the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat had no blood or gore, but Weapon Lord for the same system let you fucking disembowel your opponent. 
<laughs> if you use my tier list in your video essay, I'm not going to use anyone's tier list in that video essay if I make that. Like, that, <laughs> that wouldn't be happening there. Yeah, Mortal Kombat was definitely a very infamous thing there. So we talked about Mortal Kombat. We talked about Death Race. We talked about Grand Theft Auto. There was another one that came out around the same time as Grand Theft Auto that we talked about, and now I'm forgetting what it is. Lady Camilla, I've relayed your message to Harmonia as requested. Thank you. And how did he react? Like it was old news, I suppose. But to be fair, Lady Camilla, what did you expect? I see. Please don't look so down. This just means that Harmonia already knows how you feel about him. Let me tell you a story, Silas. Long ago, there was an ugly barnacle. Long ago, when Harmonia was locked up in the castle, I baked some cookies and brought him a plate, along with some tea. Yes, I remember that day. Those were delicious. You remember that day? But like, what? that's presuming that it only happened on one day and that was it. I'm glad you thought so, but Harmonia never got a chance to try them. What? Why not? Well, if I remember correctly, he was in the middle of a lesson. By the time you and everyone else had taken a cookie, there were none left. I ran into him later that day, and he was flushed and angry. Thanks for nothing, my so-called sister, he shouted. Yes, I remember. Jessie's getting really restless here. You know, she's a... Uh... In under a week, November 4th, the day that we're doing the 24-hour uh, charity stream, She's turning 15 years old. You know, that is very, very, very old for a doogie. And, you know, she's very much showing her age. We know that there isn't a whole lot of time left with her, but, you know, making making the most of what time we have here, you know. And, you know, getting very restless here, it seems like. Not able to quite settle down. Hey, I'm not going anywhere, Jesse. So I took Harmony into my arms and told him, I love you so much. And I vowed to never let him forget it. That's a sweet story, Lady Camilla, and I understand your motivation. But if I may be so bold, I don't think you need to worry so much. And why is that? Well, Harmonia was only a child, and he was reacting in a childish manner. You are certainly not at fault in any way, and he definitely knows you love him. Be that as it may, I never want to see Harmonia in such a state again, and now my hand is getting some licks. So, would you mind relaying just one more message of love for me? Again? Yes. This time try saying, you are so sweet and I love you so much. Really channel my emotions if you can. Let Harmonia feel the depth of my love. Very well, Lady Camilla. One more time. Hey, Jess. But yeah, let's just see here. Did you talk about OG Modern Warfare 2's no Russian controversy? No, that, that's not one that we talked about. Like, did it depict Russian soldiers and then not have any Russian? Or, like, what? Or what with the stuff going on in Ukraine, they just elected to not have, like, Russia be included, like, no Russian language in the game because of, like, all that stuff going on? But yeah. Um, and yeah, Korn be a little bit of a prick in that moment there. I assume Manhunt was brought up during that class, considering it got banned from several countries for how obscenely violent it is. Maybe. I don't remember. I'm gonna have to like rewatch my video lectures. There's like video lectures that we watch like in preparation for the lectures, and then the lectures themselves are more like discussion based where we discuss the content and readings and stuff like that. It might. I think it might have been in the video lectures, like very briefly. It wasn't one of the ones that was dealt to in depth, if it was. Had a 15 year old dog once, miss him. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a very old age for a doggy there. Doggy lived to 13, you think? You were really young when he died, like three. Yeah, I was like three when the family cat passed away and she was like 20, you know, Blackjack was her name. No Russian in Modern Warfare 2 was a part where you gunned down an airport. Oh, so it's like a mission name. I have a I have a friend that worked on Modern Warfare 2, interestingly enough. The next podcast that's going up, which I just uploaded earlier today and I'll publish like sometime next week. The additional person that we have like brought on there for Mata worked on that game with like some of the sound design is the case so yeah look forward to uh look forward to that probably sometime next week i don't know when i'm gonna publish it like maybe friday or something like that fridays are good days for publishing things so maybe i'll publish that then or something like that but yeah so there's a uh, there's that so speaking about that game recently got a pod podcast finalized that's going up on the channel soon of someone that worked on that game there so there's that that's from 2009 oh where you cover uh 
Oh, wait. Hold on. Maybe I'm getting my games mixed up then. Whatever Call of Duty was the most recent one then. Hold on. Or Warfare. Because I could have sworn there was something with a title like that that came out recently. Yeah. Infinity Ward, September 24th, 2022. Okay, I'm not losing my mind. Thank goodness. Because I was about to say, wait, is this Modern Warfare 2? But it came out in 2009. I was like, wait, what? Because he wouldn't have worked on that. Reboot Modern Warfare 2. Okay, yeah. That was, uh, that was the game that, uh, that Fermata worked on a little bit. Hey, Jesse. But yeah, where you are undercover in a terrorist group and you join an attack and you're told not to speak Russian as you kill everyone. You actually don't have to fire a bullet, but it caused quite a stir, huh? I caught games where you use titles or either reusing titles or a reboot or who knows what. They're COD games. <laughs> but yeah, so much of a stir that later on they add a setting to play that mission or not. Just like you enable in settings whether or not you play that mission. <laughs> Done with my patrol, Lady Camilla. Nothing to report. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. Thank you, Selena. Did make sure to investigate the basements, yes? Don't worry about a thing. I checked high and low. Very good, very good. Well done, Selena. Oh, also think about other Fire Emblem content. I'm in like the final stages of the video on my Fire Emblem Engage spreadsheet. It'll go up sometime next month for certain, probably. Um, just doing my job. Hey, um, if anyone even plays Engage anymore at this point, I'm your favorite retainer, right? You're very dependable. Okay, but that's not what I asked. I won't rest until I know I'm the best. <laughs> You're a strong, cute girl. Isn't that enough? You're just dodging the question. But it's clear enough that you care about me. That's all I want. Each and every one of my retainers is precious to me. Each and every one? Don't you only have two? You are no exception, darling Selena. You okay, Jesse? You're so dear to me that I would slay you myself rather than let you leave my service. Lady Camilla, that's not the reassurance I was looking for. <laughs> wow, okay. No, Russia was a big issue in that mission specifically. Wow. Hell, they even teased a new version of No Russian for the reboot Modern Warfare 3 coming out in November. Huh. Maybe I should look into that at some point just to, you know, broaden my understanding of like big things that happened within the gaming industry and stuff like that. But yeah, it's the idea of doing nasty shit like that in games that sets off the media, even if it's optional. Huh. You know, one of the things that we talked about in the unit on violence in games is how the things that people will discuss about like being a major issue and you know will spawn the arguments of like video games are violent and a bad influence and stuff like that are always the things that are just like socially unacceptable forms of violence but things that are socially acceptable versions of violence you know those are always okay and you know never really get that kind of discussion like for example going to war and gunning down soldiers that is considered a socially acceptable form of violence, you know, but uh, this was used in the context of death race there. But, you know, running over these figures that could be humans, even though the developers said that they were definitely gremlins or goblins or something or other. That's running over pedestrians is not a this is, blah, 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 is not a socially acceptable form of violence. So we we got to put the lid on that. That's not OK. And, you know, I thought that that was like an interesting like matter of putting things into perspective there where it's like yeah you've got other things here that are arguably equally violent but it really begs the question of what we accept as socially acceptable forms of violence you know is the case i just but yeah kind of jarring what maybe i should have it go back to road taken or something like that later kind of jarring when it goes from the one theme to the same theme you know here but yeah yeah like Maybe another timeline, maybe that'd be the case with more people, you know, not accepting even warfare is socially acceptable violence, but, you know, generally it is. So it's like that doesn't come into the discussions there. Hello, Baruka. But yeah, don't forget that violence is acceptable as long as it's towards a monstrous creature. Yeah, that was the argument that was being made in Death Race. So apparently Death Race was like some 1980 film about like racing across the country while like running over pedestrians and like you get more points the more pedestrians you run over and stuff like that and it was about it was meant to be like an argument about like 
corrupt governments and stuff like that and you know awful regimes like this that we should never let things get to um and there was like a lot of discourse about the film at the time where some people were just like oh yeah it makes the argument that this is pretty messed up and some other people made the argument that's like oh it's trying to make this argument but it relishes in it way too much and you know like you know therefore misses the point and stuff like that but apparently the film made a whole lot of waves so <laughs> this one team was just like hey let's make a video game with the same name to capitalize on its success because that was a thing that you could just do a whole lot more easily back then you know and maybe not as easily as uh, today in the gaming industry but back then it was just kind of a thing that happened when you were making like arcade cabinet machines um so they made a video game called death race where you controlled like a little you know car that basically just looked like how do i describe it a t but you know with a line on either side it was this shape you know it was like that and then little stick figures running around that you needed to run over for points and they painted onto the arcade cabinet well not painted but it was illustrated on the arcade cabinet that the ones that were driving the vehicles weren't humans they were like these skeleton like creatures these grim reaper like characters and in the instruction manual or something like that somewhere it said that these stick figures running around oh they're gremlins or goblins or something like that um they're not people but you know people would naturally associate it with the film of the same name and see stick figures and assume that they're people and uh you know i don't know how on an arcade cabinet you'd get that other context that they're you know something else so i guess they didn't really have any indication otherwise and you know, there'd be like this high pitched sound that would come out when you run one over and people were saying like, oh, it's people screaming as you hit them. It's so violent. This is so graphic. Unbelievable. And it's like, wow, it's uh, it's really interesting comparing that to, uh, you know, stuff today of similar nature, you know, but yeah. And also interesting to show how just association with another thing will cause people to, you know, associate something being a whole lot more violent than it supposedly is you know because it's associated with this other thing of the same name but yeah let's see here thinking more like rpgs where you kill monsters in the hundreds yeah something like that would probably be a whole lot more violent than something like you know that death race arcade cabinet but because you're uh because people figured that it was pedestrians and humans it was uh not okay anymore can't count how many slimes you've massacred in dragon quest 11 hey camilla do you have an assignment for me not at the moment. I simply wanted to chat with my darling retainer. Is that an order? <laughs> so cold, Baruka. I always obey your orders, of course. I know my place. But if there is no assignment, I would rather not waste time talking. Oh? In that case, I formally order you to bide a while and talk. I'm not a good conversationalist. <laughs> I know that full well, dear Baruka. Would you rather I had you do something to amuse me? I'm an assassin, not a court jester. Oh dear, have I upset you? I only tease because I love, dear. Surely you understand. I wouldn't know. Part of me also thought about talking about Fire Emblem Fates in regards, in like Conquest specifically, in regards to violence. <laughs> Which is because of the whole notion of like, we have these steel weapons that can easily kill. Let's just use them non-lethally, you know, <laughs> in countless of these chapters. Not really making sense. But I feel like that's not something that I can really delve deep into. It feels more like, you know, laziness than you know really thought out decision about why it's gonna be this way in the game so i i'm not gonna do that for a video essay <laughs> what would i do without you but yeah 